Hi there, smart home enthusiasts. Water damage is one of the biggest threats to homes and a leading cause of insurance claims. Around 24% of home insurance claims are due to water damage. That's almost one in four claims. The cost can quickly skyrocket from a simple leak into thousands of dollars in repairs. But what if you could stop those water damage emergencies before they spiral out of control? That's where smart home technology comes in. Today, we're going to show you how to set up an integrated system that can automatically detect leaks and shut off your main water line to prevent catastrophic damage from these common sources. Oftentimes, there'll be leaks around plumbing systems under the sink, like in, around the toilets, home appliances like dishwashers and refrigerators with ice makers, washing machines, and hot water tanks, and other water sources as well. Today's project overview, we'll be trying out the new Zemi Smart M1 hub and the Zigbee smart water valve along with Acara's wireless leak sensors. By connecting these devices in Apple Home, we can create automated routines that will close the water valve whenever a leak is detected by sensors placed around water sources in our home. Full disclosure, Zemi Smart did reach out to me and sent me these devices free of charge to try out and review with you on my YouTube channel. But as normal, I only review and give my honest opinion on products and I don't give away editorial rights away like some manufacturers have asked me for. I just only started hearing about Zemi Smart uh, and these products, and after researching them a little, they appear like they're a great budget-friendly option for smart home users, with the M1 Matter Hub only coming in at $49, and the Zigbee 3.0 Smart Valve at $29. So first, let's get these boxes opened up and check out what we have to do to install them and get them set up. Let's start by opening up this Smart Valve. See what we have here. So we have, uh, looks like some installation instructions and uh, a user manual. So we'll set those aside for a moment and take a look at them in just a second. And then we have the US plug, thank goodness. I was a little worried about how that might come. So we have the US plug, power, power brick, and we have, looks like the brackets that are necessary to install it, the big hose clamp, thank goodness, because uh, I have a big pipe for my water valve, so I was wondering how big that hose clamp was gonna be. And then of course we have the actual smart valve itself. Let's get that out of the packaging here and take a, look, a little closer look at it. Okay, well it looks like it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I was thinking from the pictures I saw that it was going to be pretty small and I was really questioning, I still am questioning to some degree, whether or not this thing has enough torque to turn the water valve on our main water valve line. Um, it's not too hard or too tight to turn, but it is, um, it's not super easy either. So we'll see if this has enough torque to turn that thing on and off. Looks like this ring is a way to like, if you pull the ring down, it'll allow you to bypass the the bracket here and allow you to open your water valve manually by just pulling this down. Kind of like what you would do with a garage door opener, I believe. Is there's that bypass that you can just pull down and uh, release the bracket and it just that allows you to operate it manually. Okay, cracking this thing open for the first time. And then we have the hub right up front. There's no protection on the top of that thing, huh? Just that's, oh, super lightweight too. That's a really lightweight. Not much in here. So we have the type C power block and ethernet cable for the LAN. And on the back, we have the home kit code. And it looks like we have the home kit code again here and installation manual. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. And in here we have, looks like just the power cord maybe. Ah, it's the ethernet. It's the ethernet cable. Do we not get a power cord? I wonder if I have to supply that separately. Oh no, there we go. Power cord's in there too, just at the bottom. Just have to provide a, looks like the brick, power brick to power it up. So that's not too bad. All right, I also looks like it comes with one of these little pins so that you can reset it uh, if you need to. 
The Zemi Smart Hub is matter enabled, so it will work with most smart home ecosystems like Apple Home, Google, Alexa, Smart Things, pretty much all ecosystems that support matter. And it supports Thread, Zigbee 3.0 protocols. But for this application, I think we're going to end up using the Zigbee 3.0 Club protocol because this smart valve is not Thread enabled. While this Matter Hub is Zigbee 3.0 and Thread capable, the smart valve is not Thread enabled. So we're going to end up connecting the smart valve through Zigbee 3.0 to the M1 Hub and the M1 Hub will be connected to our Apple Home and that'll make that integrated into the Apple Home. So we can then use the Apple Home automations in order to automate when a leak is detected to close the valve. Here's what I'm thinking for installing the Zemi Smart Matter Hub is I need power and an ethernet cable so I'm going to go ahead and install it right next to the Akara M2 Hub right there because right behind it I have a nice power outlet I can plug it into and I have an ethernet switch that I can plug the ethernet cable into the switch with. So let's go ahead and get that set up and we'll get it installed in Apple Home. It's pretty short. I'm not sure that's going to be long enough to reach where I need to go to my get to my switch. So we'll try this first and if not I'll get a longer one. Okay, definitely not long enough. I have to go find an ethernet cable, it's longer. Got a longer ethernet cable here plugged in. It was probably, had to have one probably three times as long. And I got it plugged in, I just used, as far as a plug on the other side, since it doesn't come with a power plug, I used a power plug just off of an old iPhone. So just one of those little wear white power plugs that comes off of an iPhone. So next, looks like I have the connection to the ethernet and I have the power indicator, so it wants me to download the Smart Life app, and there's a little QR code. So we'll go ahead and download that. Looks like it's downloading a Tuya, Tuya app. All right, now that we have it downloaded and have an account created. Okay, add Zemi Smart M1 Hub. Okay, looks like it's finally adding. That was not very intuitive, to be honest. It took a little bit of finessing to try and figure out what it actually wanted me to do. It wasn't clear. Okay, I think we have the M1 Hub added. Let's go check it out and see if it's in the Apple Home now as a bridged hub. Aha, and there we go. It showed up in the Apple Home in the Home and Home Hubs and Bridges. So, looks like it's connected. It's got two services, a Tuya and Apple Home. Okay. All right, so it looks like the next thing we need to do is get the smart valve installed and add that as a Zigbee 3.0 protocol to this Z Zeme Smart M1 hub. And then that should automatically connect it to our Apple Home as well. So let's go ahead and get that set up. Okay, here's where we're gonna get this all set up right here. So we're gonna get this valve here installed around this pipe with this worm clamp that it comes with. We'll see if that's gonna be sturdy enough. And then go ahead and get the valve itself installed on there and then plugged in right up here. So we'll get that going. Looks like all we need is just really a screwdriver to get this going. And according to the manual, you wanna align this screw here, this bolt, with the center point of that bolt there, which is what we're gonna end up doing, which really puts this in a weird place, if you ask me. It seems like it would has less leverage here and torque to be able to turn this. Seems like this should be out farther out here. So we'll see if this has enough torque once we get it installed.
Okay, I'll get that all cleaned up later. <clears throat> okay, now let's take a look. Now we got this installed. I think you can see very well. So I had to make sure that this bolt here was centered with that bolt there. And so it just barely fit on the edge here. You could slide this thing back and forth to adjust this location, but I got it as far in as it would go in order to get it on this bigger pipe. Otherwise it kept wanting to slide on that smaller pipe and get cockeyed a little bit. But we got that all installed. I've got it plugged in here and we'll get this all nice and neat and tidied up later. But um, we do have the bypass valve here, the ring that you pull that and allows the mechanism to be free swinging or free wheeling, whatever they call it. And uh, then there's also then a manual button here that's set up here that all we have to do I think is push it and it should turn off the water. So let's see what happens here. Mm, it's torquing it pretty hard, isn't it? I don't know that it got it all the way. Will it go more? Oh, not much more. It did go a little bit more, but not much. Well, I'm surprised that it actually does have enough torque. That is a pretty free swinging. It didn't go all the way though, but I can adjust these. So let me adjust these a little bit and see if I can get that to open all the way and, and then close all the way. Let's go get a, uh, a little wrench to fit that. Let's see what happens there. Didn't go a little more. Okay, I got this adjusted enough. Uh, it doesn't close all the way, but when I went in the house and actually tested the water when it's this far, just as far as it would close it, water is completely turned off in the house. So that's a good sign. So it should open it all the way back up and we should be ready to set this up and connect it to the M1 hub. Okay, it says to put it in pairing mode, press and hold five seconds. Okay, I see that it definitely is in pairing mode. Device management, quick add. Discovering nearby devices. Okay, that was interesting. And uh, I have to be honest here, what I had to do, I could not get it con to connect to the sub device on the Zemi Smart Hub being out here in the garage where this valve is at. This valve is maybe only 15, maybe 20 feet away. I mean, there is walls and stairs and stuff in the way, but it's not that far away. So what I had to do was I disconnected all of this, took it in the house next to the hub and plugged it in and it connected right away. So I'm not sure why it wouldn't connect, but I did get it connect and I do have it installed on the screen here. And so we can see from the Zemi Smart app, we can go ahead and operate the valve. I don't think my uh, hot water tank like that too much. All right. That seems to operate fine. So let's see if we can now make sure that it's in the Apple Home. And if it's in the Apple Home, then we're home free. And all we have to do is set up an automation that when a leak is detected to shut the valves. When I went into Apple Home, all I did was go into the living room where I added the matter hub. And I scrolled to the bottom and I found that it had this matter accessory already installed. So it had named it matter accessory comma four. So I just went in and renamed it to smart water valve. I kept it as an outlet and moved it to the garage. The next step here is to add the automations. So you go into one of the rooms where a water leak sensor is. You click on the water leak sensor, click on automation, and then say detect leaks. And then scroll down and find the garage 
and then find the smart valve. Select the smart valve and then say turn off and then click done and then you're done. I basically have seven of these water leak sensors spread throughout the house in the kitchens and bathrooms and laundry area in garage where the hot water tank is. I went ahead and did that for all seven of these leak sensors. Okay, so we had it in Apple Home. Go to the garage. And I have my smart water valve here, so I should be able to turn it on and off within Apple Home. That works good. Turn it back on. Okay. All right. So that's good. We got it working inside the Apple Home. The automations are set up inside the Apple Home now. So next step is let's go get one of the Acara leak sensors and uh, dip it in some water and see if it automatically detects it and what happens. So I got a critical alarm from Akara and it automatically turned it off for me. I turned it back on because my hot water tank's trying to fill back up. So that is how it's supposed to work, just like that. It worked just like we wanted it to. So whenever there's a leak, it'll automatically discover the leak. Akara will send the leak to the Akara hub and the Akara hub will send it to the Apple home and then the automation will pick that up and automatically Turn the smart valve off. Oh, an alarm in the house is going off too, I can hear. So I'll have to go turn that off as well. With the smart water valve system like this in place, you can relax knowing your home is protected from devastating water issues 24 seven. No more coming home to a disaster zone if a pipe bursts or an appliance leaks while you're out and about. The combo of Zemi Smart Hub, the smart valve and a car sensors makes it easy and affordable to add this level of water intelligence to any smart home setup. With just a few simple automations, you can get round the clock, leak monitoring, and water shutoff power. Catching water problems early can save you tens of thousands of dollars in repairs and replacements. Don't wait until it's too late. Set up your smart leak defense today for total peace of mind. Hit that subscribe button for more smart home content. Please check out the descriptions below for any of the links to the product websites, or if you'd like to check out the products that I've mentioned. Those links do help the channel out and there's no cost to you for using them in any way. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.